Greetings. Welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Tonight we're going back to the channel's roots a little bit and we're gonna have a look at a mobile phone. This video is also a response to Lewis Rossman. For those of you who don't know, Lewis is the owner of Rossman Repair Group, a fantastic group of uh, our company that does uh, electronics repair. They do amazing work over there. And he's also a pioneer in the right to repair space. For those of you that follow Lewis, you'll remember that a few weeks ago, he published a video or a series of videos kind of pointing out some shortcomings that Samsung has had recently. And one of the things that had happened of note is that he went on to a Reddit AMA, the Samsung Reddit AMA, and asked them, hey, when are you guys going to release a phone that features a headphone jack, an easily replaceable battery, and a micro SD card slot, kind of like the S10e. And they deleted, the, well, they didn't delete it, but they removed the question from the AMA, which kind of blew my mind, right? It really blew my mind more than anything because Samsung already has a phone with similar features. So tonight we're going to look at Samsung's best kept secret, the X Cover 6 Pro. So this phone is a, 5G device that is meant for use with enterprise, mainly frontline workers, police, firemen, public servants, military, armed guards, etc. With that being said, full disclosure, I am in the Samsung early adopter program. And due to that, I do get Samsung devices sent to me for free. They are not sent to me for free for the purpose of reviewing though. Well, not reviewing publicly anyway. I happen to be uh, in a position where I've been in telecom for many years. Companies like Samsung and Kyocera and formerly LG and Verizon and AT&T and so on, they send me devices to have a look at in hopes that I will in return add their device to my approved device list and purchase it. Just so we have all that out there. I am a big fan of what Samsung has done with phones in general. They really have, in my opinion, the only product that can compete directly with the iPhone. That being said, I also know that Samsung is a big bad corporation, just like any other corporation, that really is only accountable to its shareholders and sometimes not even that. Uh, so I put them on the same level playing field as I do every large corporation like Apple or Dell or Google. And you know, you really can only trust them as far as you can throw them, right? Just so we're all on the same page there. So this Xcover 6 Pro is actually the sequel in a line of Xcover phones. It's the latest one released. The Xcover, like I said, geared more towards first responders and so on. It had some shortcomings the original X-Cover Pro. Uh, they cut some corners in order to make the device more affordable, which I can appreciate. Uh, but with that affordability, they, they kind of cut the salami a little too thin, if you will, all right? It came with a TFT LCD and an Exynos chipset that just wasn't strong enough. The TFT, I'm not even sure it was 1080p. It might've been 720p. It looked like 720p and there was a ton of light bleed around the punch hole for the front facing camera. It was just, it was it was rough, it was rough. So I, I specifically remember going into a Samsung research panel and telling them exactly what my issues were with the X cover and why we weren't gonna buy it anymore. And they came back a year and a half later with the X cover Pro 6 and I'll be darned if they didn't address every single one of my concerns. So I don't know if the left hand doesn't talk to the right or what, but Samsung is indeed capable of taking feedback, applying it, and coming out with a new device in a reasonable amount of time. So here's our X-Cover 6 Pro. It's got a 6.6 .6 inch uh, PLS LCD screen. It's 1080 by 2400 resolution. We got an eight megapixel front shooter. We've got dual rear shooters. One is 50 megapixels, and I can't remember what the other one is, but you have an ultra wide, okay. Decent enough, shoots at 4K, 30 FPS, 1080p, 60. All right, and just to give you a quick size comparison here, here's the X-Cover Pro 6, and here is a regular S22. Here's how it looks like next to the S22 Ultra, and yes, I do have a case on here, but it's actually a relatively thin case. 
So yeah, here's your size comparison. Weight-wise, it's pretty good. Mostly the outer shell is made of plastic. It does have some aluminum in there as well. And here are our key features, and this is for you, Lewis. I'm talking to you, buddy. First and foremost, you can just pull the back right off of it. In fact, this back is very reminiscent of what we saw on the uh, Galaxy S5 in that it has, it's kind of a flimsy material. It's meant to be, you know, conforming a little bit so that this gasket can seal around the electronics and you have improved water resistance. Underneath here, we have a user replaceable battery with an NFC antenna built in, which is another super key feature uh, for those of you that were around when we still had user replaceable batteries back with the S4 and the S5, one of the things that came up when the S6 came out was, oh, well, if we're going to implement M NFC properly, we can't have a user replaceable battery. Well, Samsung has since fixed that, apparently. I still think it was kind of a cop out, though. Below that, we have a semi modular body, it's mostly plastic. Uh, it does come apart considerably easier than a regular Samsung flagship. Uh, you will still need a heat gun and a pry tool, but it, it comes apart fairly easily. Uh, definitely, like I said, easier than pulling apart like a S22 Ultra. We've got our SIM card slot and our micro SD card slot. Fantastic. Let me pop the battery back in here and turn this puppy on so you can get an idea how it, how it looks when it's powered on got a, a nice bright screen like I said the PLS is definitely a step up from TFT still not quite as good as an AMOLED but it doesn't need to be this phone honestly I mean I love my S22 Ultra don't get me wrong but I bet you if you put a movie playing on a PLS LCD and an AMOLED side by side I bet you the average person couldn't tell you which one was which the blacks are not quite as dark Right, you can kind of see the frame around the edge. I like the fact that the frame's there actually. It makes it makes the screen easier to come apart. It's more repairable. We don't have to deal with all that waterfall garbage, right? Um, but yeah, the dark the darks aren't quite as dark and the brights not quite as bright. It's got a high contrast mode there. But it's certainly certainly serviceable and, and bright enough. And then the other thing that Samsung did is they used, they replaced the Exynos chipset with the Snapdragon 788G, which is definitely not a flagship chipset once again, but it's pretty high up there. It's got an octa-core uh, big little architecture. Uh, it's got the newer big little architecture. So it's got one really big core, three mid cores and four efficiency cores. So you kind of get that nice, super responsive, easy to flip around um, experience, right? Now, if we look at the bottom here, here's where the fun stuff starts. We've got a USB-C port. We've got our wireless charging right here. We've got a dedicated microphone, dedicated speaker. Okay. We've got a uh, programmable button. This is really I think intended more for push to talk because a lot of the carriers will sell push to talk services, right? Um, but you can program this button to do just about whatever you want. On top, oh, look at that. I'll be darned. We got ourselves a headphone jack. Yep, a headphone jack. And we got ourselves another dedicated mic and a button for the flashlight, quote unquote, which is just the flash for the camera, but still nice feature. Nice to have if you're out in the field. Then on this side, we've got ourselves a fingerprint reader and a mechanical button for the home screen and volume buttons. So overall, a pretty nice construction. I feel like there's a, a specific subset of users uh, that do similar work that I do that want these features. And they just haven't heard about it because this phone isn't marketed to them. But it's $600. Like, yeah, it's a little high, but the price is right, and you get, it checks all the boxes. Lewis, this is for you, bud. Checks every box in your Reddit AMA question, and it's been out on the market for a few months now. You get, I can't remember if it's three or five years, but it's either three or five years of guaranteed security updates, right? You can't lose. So anyway, I just wanted to take this time to make a brief review of you guys, for you guys. I have another video up, a separate video, 
where I ran some benchmarks on this phone side by side with the S22 and S22 Ultra. If you want to take a look at that, it's linked below down in the description. Anyway, that's all I have about all I have to say about the X-Cover Pro. Lewis, if you want to try this phone out, I will gladly send it to you. Free of charge, no strings attached. But I have the feeling you're probably going to stick with your Pixel. And honestly, I, I would stick with your Pixel 2 because it's got a completely different OS. But if you want to give Samsung another shot, here's your ticket. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I've got more videos coming down the pike. Please subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you soon.